Happy Thursday. It's amazing weather outside. It's a good, good day to go outside for a walk, which we plan to do as soon as we're done with this video. Um, today we're going to talk about methylation. It's been a hot topic for the last few years. It's something we get asked about over and over again. We wanted to kind of spin it more into now people are very, very aware of MTHFR, aware of methylation, um, the impact it has on our health, and are we overemphasizing it? Are we blaming that for everything? Is it possible to over-methylate yourself if you've gotten your test back and decided to take a whole bunch of folate or Deplin or whatever? So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the cycle, the impact it has on your anxiety, depression, neurotransmitters, cognitive function, energy, all that good stuff. And can you over or under methylate? So we'd like to say a thank you to Christy Reeves, one of our patients, for bringing new colors so everybody can see the board. Instead yeah, of the bolder. same old markers, yeah. we now have all different colors. So I've tried to draw the methylation cycle again. Um, I, I agree. I think, you know, five years ago, I've been practicing medicine for quite a long time. About five years ago, nobody even knew really a lot about MTHFR. I think Ben Lynch has brought it out into the open. And while I think it's important to understand our genetics, I do think that we see a lot of people that say, I have this MTHFR thing. What does that mean? Is it a problem? And about a year ago, we did a video trying to explain a little bit of how when your situation, your life situation, what's going on around you can truly affect that and I think that draws us back to can we create more of a problem can we over methylate ourselves or why would we get under methylated and do we need to aggressively or proactively do anything about that so methylation cycle remember a methyl group is a carbon hydrogen group carbon hydrogen it's pulled off your leafy greens Number one thing people need to do is eat how many cups of vegetables a day? Oh, six to nine would be ideal. Great. Remember, a lot of them green leafies. They don't all have to be raw. They have to be high on the color scheme, and they have to be variable and seasonably changing if possible. You will pull this carbon hydrogen group off your green leafies with the enzyme MTHFR. Now, on this drawing, the enzymes, which are what makes Point A go to point B, or compound A go to compound B, are all in red. And the reason I did that is because what I want everybody to understand is you have to be somewhat reasonably balanced. If you're not, you wouldn't be alive. So whatever SNPs or single nuclear polymorphisms or changes in your enzyme, whatever you want to call it, they must be balanced enough that you are still alive. So if you do have the SNP and the 677, remember, your cytosine is replaced with a thiamine, so therefore this MTHFR enzyme works a little slower. It's going to come around the corner and it has to put the methylfolate with the B12. There are plenty other enzymes that then have to spin in order to come around here, make methionine, and make SAMI, which is going to take this methyl group all over your body to do its job. Your balance of who you are is very much determined by how you will feel. So again, if you're slow here, you may not have any snips here. So this spins really efficiently. And then as you come around the corner, Sammy will take the methyl group and kind of a little convoluted in the way I drew it, but this methyl group is also very important in your neurotransmitters. So serotonin and dopamine use another enzyme with to offload. So our the take home message is, is that just because you have a SNP in MTHFR or a SNP in something else, doesn't mean you necessarily have a problem. You have to spin your wheel. You have to make glutathione. That's gonna help your free radicals. You have to offload your neurotransmitters. What's important is that the enzymes are fed with the right foods What's important is that you get enough sunlight that is going to help your system actually not need probably as much organic food. We live and make energy out of electrons and we absorb them through our pigment from the sun. So food is organic material that's giving us electrons. If we can get sunlight, we can get that more efficiently. So again, your system will balance depending upon where your environment is around it. Now, one of the things Sheila was talking about is people will take Sammy, right? And they mm -hmm. will feel better. Right. 
or they'll, they'll be told they have the MTHFR mutation, automatically thinking that means I require more B12 and folate, and they will feel better. Or they'll take SAMI, which is the universal methyl donor, as you have taught me, and they will feel better. And so I do think there's validity of right. that. Um, now, I do also think there are people that take this and say, okay, my doc told me I have a 677, so I went out and I got, you know, 30 grams of B12 and 30 grams of folate and to take those because I need so much and then they got themselves into trouble correct. where their anxiety actually increased. It's worse, correct. And I have had people email me and say, you know, I think I overmethylated myself. Sometimes these people are taking very low doses of B12 and folate. Sometimes they're taking higher, but is it possible to make yourself worse even with low dose supplementation? Yes. Do you feel like that runs the cycle too quickly? Well, I think it's two things. Number one, if you're not low in something, you can, and you take more of it, your body will lose something else to offload it. But I think we have to remember that you're not necessarily low in B12 that you need to replace it. You got to figure out why you were low in B12. So I, I think the body's smarter than we are, and we often forget that. The cycle will spin if you enable it to. If you get your rest, if you exercise, if you eat clean, if you eat your vegetation, if you provide healthy methyl groups, you're going to get way better methyl groups from your power green salad and your Brussels sprouts than you are from your supplement. I think sometimes what happens is if you run low in a certain situation because of a lifestyle choice and you try to push through that by just taking a supplement, the body will win and you won't feel good. And I think that's where people get into trouble. We see a lot of people, and, and I'm, we, we try to talk about healthy diet, but there are a lot of people that will say, hey, I'm just gonna be a vegetarian. Tuesday I was eating meat, Wednesday I'm a vegetarian. Your gut bugs can't deal with that. The, the B12 runs low right away. So you're not just necessarily gonna take B12 and feel better that way. You may have more anxiety, you may feel more fatigued. So I think as long as you understand what created the problem in the first place, Maybe if you decide to become a vegetarian, research it. Make sure your diet is a balanced vegetarian or vegan diet. Maybe get your micronutrients done every few months so you can follow the process of it. So I don't think it's ever, here's one problem that I have and let me, let me immediately supplement it. And I think if you do that, you have a chance of overspinning the wheel. Yeah, and, and I think that takes us to the instinctual eating that we've gotten away from. We've mentioned this in several videos, but um, we are like animals to where animals will smell their food before they eat it to make sure that it smells okay, but they will also eat by instinct. They will know instinctually, okay, I am low in this nutrient, I'm gonna go seek out this certain food, or they will reject another food because they don't need it. And you'll see babies do that. Um, I remember when my kids were super little, a lot of times they would eat a certain food every single day for five days in a row, and then all of a sudden reject it. I think their body was saying, I don't need any more of what's in that food right now. We are innately, we have a lot of innate intelligence that would tell us what nutrients we need. It is thrown off by the fact that we have all these hyper palatable foods that override that system. They keep pushing the body into emergency mode thinking, okay, the famine is coming. That's the only reason this highly palatable food would be available in the first place. We must be getting ready for a famine. So let's, that's gonna override all the other body's natural signals. And so I think if we all ate instinctually with a clean diet, which right. means different things for, cleanness I just mean things that grew in the ground or flew in the air or whatever, but went basically from farm to table, not being messed with in a lab, I think that we wouldn't get ourselves into so much trouble because people have had these mutations for longer than we think. Correct. And they have been able to survive and not have the autism numbers and the learning disability and the depression that we have. And that goes now. back to, remember, this cycle uh, bad gut, so gut being off or inflamed, and you might not necessarily have constipation, but you can have a gut that's a problem. And and we know that with Roundup and glyphosate and all the the toxins outside, that even on a low level, a lot of people have gut inflammation. Free radicals, which are lifestyle choices, and depending upon what you eat, and cortisol will shut the cycle down. So no matter what your SNPs are, that is going to prevent this from turning. And if you, stress hormone cortisol. Yes, stress hormone. Stress. And if you get, if, and if you overspin this cycle, again, sometimes you'll overspin it because if you look at the bottom, glutathione is a big antioxidant. So sometimes you're gonna overspin your cycle so you can make more glutathione and that'll create anxiety because you're making more methyl groups. So I think we go back to balance. Yeah. Eating clean 
Mm. And uh, testing can be important. So if we, just because you have an MTHFR doesn't necessarily mean you need more B12 and folate. Yes. Doing a nutrient test can really tell you that for sure. Um, now, if you happen to overmethylate yourself, what do you uh, suggest doing in that case? If you, you know, you're one of those people, I decided I was going to take this much B12 folate and now I feel terrible. What would I do to offload that? Your body will pee it off. I think your body will pee it off without a problem. And I think that as long as you, again, good meditation, sunlight, in other words, get your system as healthy as possible, B12 you should get rid of. And most of the time, if you let your system just kind of heal itself, it'll help. So and you then, don't suggest niacin? For no, okay. no. And then even the, the, and I didn't draw it up here, there's a breakthrough that you can push through from homocysteine to, to methionine that glycine, trimethylglycine or glycine, will help overspin that. So you could probably add a little bit of glycine if you wanted to. But beets. Eat beets. But I think, well done. <laughs> but I think that in general, if you're taking it and you're feeling a little bit off, I would kind of just stop and I think most of the time we get better. Okay. I think we covered it. We're good. All right. Good day.